The legendary Antonov AN-225, the largest aircraft ever built, is officially being rebuilt. Yes, the Maria, the one destroyed during the 2022 invasion of Ukraine. After years of silence, Antonov has confirmed that work is underway on a second version, and it's already shocking the industry with the scale of support and ambition behind it. So can Maria 2.0 really fly again? And who's helping bring this aviation giant back to life? In this video, we'll explore the full story behind Maria's incredible comeback how it's happening, who's involved, and why the world is watching. Let's get started. The Antonov AN-225 Maria is an airplane that was forged under pressure during one of the most intense periods of global tension, the Cold War. In the early 1980s, the Soviet Union was locked in a fierce technological rivalry with the United States. The Americans had just launched their reusable space shuttle program, and the USSR needed a way to compete. Their answer was the Buran Space Shuttle. But while the shuttle itself was a breakthrough, it came with a logistical nightmare. It was massive, fragile, and needed to be transported across long distances. Trains were too narrow, ships were too slow, no existing aircraft could handle the size and weight. So the Soviets gave Antonov Design Bureau a task no one had ever completed, build an aircraft large and powerful enough to carry the space shuttle on its back. Antonov's team, led by some of the brightest Soviet engineers, took on the challenge in 1984. What they came up with was unprecedented. The AN-225 wasn't an evolution of existing designs, it was a leap. The aircraft would end up measuring measuring 84 meters or 275 feet in length with a wingspan of 88.4 meters or 290 feet, making it the largest airplane ever constructed by wingspan and overall length. It had six massive Ivchenko Progress D-18T turbofan engines, each producing 51,600 pounds of thrust, giving it a maximum takeoff weight of 640 tons or 1.4 million pounds. No other plane in history has matched that. To spread this enormous load evenly across runways, it was a Equipped with 32 wheels, each designed to pivot independently, allowing it to taxi and maneuver despite its size. The first flight took place on December 21st, 1988. Spectators, including engineers who helped build it, stood in disbelief. This wasn't just a proof of concept, it was a flying powerhouse. Within months, the AN-225 began breaking aviation records. It carried the Bern shuttle across Soviet territory, showcasing its core mission. But as the space program declined, the plane found a new purpose in the civilian world. In 2001, it transported the heaviest air cargo in recorded history, a 189-ton generator from Germany. In 2004, it broke its own record, moving 247 tons of cargo in a single trip. The AN-225 didn't just serve commercial missions, it stepped into humanitarian roles as well. After the Haiti earthquake in 2010, it delivered critical aid. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the aircraft transported essential medical supplies, over 1,000 cubic meters meters worth in one flight. No aircraft could match its capacity, and more importantly, its versatility. What made Maria different was its ability to transport massive cargo both inside its cavernous fuselage and mounted externally. For countries in need of fast, large-scale support, the AN-225 was often the only viable option. This wasn't just a plane, it was the embodiment of bold thinking. It redefined what heavy lift aviation could be. It earned the nickname Maria, which means dream in Ukraine. Ukrainian, not just because of what it carried, but because of what it represented. The dream that engineering could defy limits when pushed far enough. But even dreams have vulnerabilities. And in 2022, during a brutal and unexpected turn in Eastern Europe, the Sky Giant was caught on the ground in the wrong place at the worst time. On February 24th, 2022, Russia launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Just hours into the offensive, one of the very first military targets struck was Hostomol Airport, also known as Antonov Airport, located just outside Kyiv. For years, this site served as the operational base for Ukraine's most iconic aircraft, the N-225 Maria. At the time of the attack, Maria was parked inside one of the airport's massive hangars. When the Russian assault began, artillery and airstrikes rained down on the facility, and within moments, one of aviation's greatest engineering achievements was engulfed in flames. Maria didn't stand a chance. Satellite images and drone footage later confirmed what many feared. The front section of the aircraft was completely destroyed. The nose had been blown apart and fire ripped through the fuselage, warping its titanium structure. Only pieces of its massive wings and charred engine nacelles remained. The destruction wasn't incidental. It happened during intense fighting between Russian paratroopers and Ukrainian forces trying to defend the 
strategic airport. The aircraft was immobile and vulnerable, sitting exposed during a high-risk window when everyone knew something could happen. That's where the controversy began. In January 2022, just weeks before the invasion, NATO's support and procurement agency had reportedly sent an official request to Antonov Airlines, offering assistance to move the AN-225 and other aircraft to a safer location. Airports in Leipzig, Germany, and Rzeszów, Poland were mentioned as possible destinations. Transporting the aircraft would have taken only a few hours, but the request was ignored. No relocation order came. According to Ukrainian investigators, Antonov's top management failed to act even as tensions escalated daily. Major Dmitro Antonov, a senior pilot for the aircraft, later accused his own company of negligence in a video statement. He claimed repeated internal warnings were dismissed and that decision makers lacked the will to protect the plane. This didn't just trigger public outrage, it led to a criminal investigation. Ukraine's state prosecutors charged Antonov executives with negligence, and the company's former CEO could face up to 15 years in prison if found guilty. The reaction wasn't just legal, it was deeply emotional. For Ukrainians, Maria was more than a plane, it was a national treasure, a symbol of engineering excellence, and a source of pride that had flown the country's flag across the world. For aviation enthusiasts globally, the loss felt personal. Videos of the wreckage circulated online within hours. The videos and images were heartbreaking. Now, Maria's story seems like it wasn't over? Hidden away in storage, there is another chance. An unfinished twin, a secret backup that had been forgotten for decades. So in the next chapter, we'll uncover the surprising discovery of a second AN-225 airframe and the early steps toward an extraordinary comeback. After the destruction of the original AN-225 Mariah, the global aviation community believed it was a permanent loss. But then came a wave of rumors, whispers in the aviation forums and defense circles. Was there a second one? It turns out there was. Hidden for decades inside a hangar near Kiev was a partially assembled second AN-225 fuselage originally built during the Soviet Union's final years. This wasn't speculation. It was confirmed by Antonov engineers and later shown in photographs released by Ukrainian officials. According to them, the second airframe was about 60% to 80% structurally complete depending on what metric you looked at, fuselage integrity, internal frames, wing mounts, or landing gear compatibility. This airframe wasn't a backup, it was the second Mariah. The original plan in the 1980s was to build at least two of them. The first went into service, while construction of the second slowed and was eventually shelved after the collapse of the Soviet Union. With the Buran shuttle program cancelled and no new budget to support such large aircraft, the half-built fuselage was pushed aside and forgotten in the chaos that followed Ukraine's independence. Antonov had quietly maintained this frame over the years. It wasn't listed in public databases, and most people assumed the project was scrapped entirely. But engineers inside Antonov kept it from being scrapped, even lobbying behind the scenes for its completion as recently as the 2010. Strategically, this was a smart move. While much of the world had no idea the second frame even existed, the company preserved it with the idea that one day it might have a second life. Once the original Mariah was lost, that silent project came roaring back into the spotlight. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky publicly acknowledged the second airframe in mid-2022 and called on international partners to help complete it. That statement wasn't just symbolic, it was a green light. Suddenly engineers from Airbus, Boeing, and even Embraer were reportedly in early talks with Antonov to share materials and design knowledge. There were whispers of partnerships forming across Europe and North America, with major aerospace players eager to assist. Not because it was profitable, but because rebuilding Maria had become something much bigger than a business decision. The project is now estimated to cost around $500 million, and as of now, Antonov has laid out a tentative timeline. Phase 1, already underway, involves fully assessing the second fuselage and sourcing compatible components. Phase 2, expected to begin late 2025, will focus on assembling major structural systems and securing engine partnerships. Phase 3, tentatively in 2026 or early 2027, will include flight systems systems, testing, and certification. If funding and development stay on track, we could see Maria 2.0 perform its maiden flight by late 2027. This version of the aircraft won't just be a copy, it will include new materials, modern avionics, and possibly more efficient engines. While the core silhouette of the AN-225 will stay intact, the systems powering it will bring it into the future. It's not just about reliving the past. This rebuild has to meet today's standards, cleaner emissions, smarter diagnostics, and better fuel 
fuel economy. That's what makes this project both ambitious and interesting. So what are your thoughts on the return of the mighty Mraya? Can you imagine seeing this beast take to the skies once again? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the story of the AN-225, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more jaw-dropping aviation stories. Until next time, thanks for watching.